Hey guys, today I'm going to be reading a rewrite of a Noel Engine to Go episode. Enjoy. Philip the Brave. Rewritten version of the All Engine to Go episode, The Tiger Train. Philip the Fox had Diesel and loved to talk about the time he saved James when he got into an accident and when he supposedly beat Gordon in the race. But these stories have been told multiple times before, which can wear on the other engine's nerves. Take, for example, last Tuesday. Gordon was waiting enough for his express coaches to be shunted when Philip raced in and said, Hey Gordon, remember when we raced? I remember it like it was yesterday. There I was, flying along that wind and... Philip then started to ramble on and on as Gordon groaned out of boredom. This was going to be a long day for him. Suddenly his coach was shunted into line and people started getting on board. Soon the guard's whistle blew and Gordon breathed a sigh of relief and with a bellow of Express coming through, he shot out of the station like a bullet. Philip was still rambling when he saw Gordon leap. No one likes my stories anymore, he sighed glumly. Edward then pulled into the station with a stopping passenger train and noted Philip's downcast expression. What's the matter, Philip? he asked kindly. No one seems to think my stories are as interesting as everyone else's. Philip sighed. Edward replied kindly with, I'm sure they do, Philip. Maybe you need a new story to tell. Just give it time and you'll have another adventure. A few days later, Philip was rolling down the Kildane branch line with a train of granite for Brendam dogs, and he was enjoying the sights immensely. What a, what a beautiful day! he said cheerfully while ch- chattering down the line. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. Philip came to Kildane Junction and saw that some of the signals were stuck green. Some of the signals are stuck green! He said cheerfully, but poured almost immediately when he said that at the realisation. Wait, some of the signals are stuck green! Look out, Philip! cried Thomas, who was up- approaching the junction. Philip quickly reversed out of Thomas's way as the Billington E2 raced by. I should probably report that, thought Philip as he went on his way. When Philip reached Brendam Docks, he saw Thomas, Percy, Nia, Rosie and Paxton, who were all engaged in the conversation excitedly. Any minute now. Do you see him yet? Not yet. Hey everyone, said Philip. Did any of you see the signal? Some of the signal stuck to. Oh, m- hold on, Philip," replied Rosie. "He should be here any second. Who?" wondered Philip curiously. He didn't need to wait long for an answer. A ship was horn was heard off in the distance, and the ship could be seen getting closer to Brecon. Brendam, who's coming?" asked Philip. "My friend from China, Yong Bao," replied Tom exactly. He's coming for the New Year's, the Lunar New Year's celebration tonight. I can't wait to meet him, squealed Rosalie excitedly. Thomas, Thomas told us all about him. He's got a really amazing tag of pages on his centre, puffed Percy. A few minutes later, Yong Bao was unloaded from the ship and was put on solid rails. It's nice to be back on Sodor, he said. I haven't been here since that great railway show mix-up back in... 2016 and I've also bought a lot of fireworks for the Lunar New Year celebration tonight, he said, showing off the fireworks. Thomas began to introduce his friends to Yong Bao, who took all took great interest in the, in the big red engine, and wanted to hear his story of when he rescued an engine from falling off a cliff. Philip, on the other hand, couldn't help be, but begin to feel jealous about all the attention Yong Bao was receiving. I can be just as brave as him! He thought in envy. I wish I could have a danger like that. He thought. With the young bow fiasco, however, Philip had forgotten about the jam signals at Kildane Junction. Da, da, da. Later on, young bow and all of the engines with Barrow Breakfast Brendan were in the sidings at Kildane Junction, and young bow was telling his famous story, and everyone was indulged in the story. Even Philip, even though he was a little green with envy, 
Then there was trouble. Yong Bao looked up and saw the jam signals, and he saw Hemi approaching the junction hauling a line of tanker trucks. He then saw James who was hauling a stop door stopping passenger service from to Natford approach from the branch line, and both were set to reach the crossing at the same time. Worse was to follow. Gord Yong Bao then heard a whistle and saw Gordon thundering toward the junction to the branch line with the express on the same track as the other two, and the, all three were set to reach the junction at the same time. Yong Bao, thinking fast, saw a line of sandbags nearby, which gave him an idea. He told his driver to grab one, and he quickly rushed out to the main line to carry out his rescue operation. For the first part of his plan, he drew alongside Henry's brake van, and his driver quickly called out to the car to fasten on the brakes from the van, and they came on with a deafening scream, leaving Henry confused. Next, Yong Bao raced to the main line and branch line connection, and his driver quickly threw sand on the rail so James would have more braking grip on the rails. Finally, he raced to the back of Gordon's express, covered up, and pulled as hard as he could the other way. Gordon was also very confused at Yong Bao's plot. What do you think you're doing, you silly red? That was when all three big engines saw each other. They were approaching the junction. Great gears! cried Henry. Bust my buffers! gasped James. Cinders and ashes, shouted Gordon. All three big tender engines slammed on the brakes. By now, all of the engines in the siding were watching the rescue, and they were all in tents because of the action that was unfolding. The three big engines came closer and closer to the connection, and everyone sh else shut their eyes, waiting for the crash. It never came. The three big engines had stopped just inches from each other. Thank you, Yong Bao. Nicely done, said Gordon in relief. Once the three big engines had been sent on their way, Thomas and his friends swarmed around Yong Bao like bees in a hive, all except Philip, who was feeling a little sad. What's wrong, Philip? asked Thomas, who had noticed. Well, I could have been the one to save the day. I saw the signal stock and was going to abort it, he said. So, so you had a chance to be brave and missed it? said Thomas. Yeah, I wish I could have impressed Young Bao with how brave I am, sighed Philip. Once all of the engines had gone for their deliveries for the Lunar New Year celebration, Philip went up to Young Bao. That was pretty brave. But you have, have you ever raced down Gorn Sail backwards? Philip said to Young Bao. You've got, re you got to be really brave to just do that. No, but it sounds fun. I'd like to check out the scenery when I'm here on Soda as well he said, so both engines went to the top of Gordon's Hill. Philip had never raced backwards down Gordon's Hill before, but he knew this was his chance to impress Yong Bao with how brave he was. This could, looks kind of dangerous to go down backwards, said Yong Bao when they reached the top. Philip gulped. Gordon's Hill is a little steeper than I remember. Philip, said Yong Bao, are you sure you want to do this? Philip was about to reply that there suddenly was a loud boom, but sent chills through their axles. That came from Morgan's mine, shouted Philip in a panic. Better go and see what happened. To be continued.